So here, I'm taking these laptop batteries apart. These Lenovo laptop batteries. And inside, there's these cells. So I'm just using this to take them apart. They're linked in series over here. So I need to take off this metal that's connecting all of them. And then basically just toss the plastic casings. And then I can use these to build my own battery. So now that I have all of these batteries, I now need to separate them into a bad pile, an I'm not sure pile, and a good pile. So, so the way to test the batteries is to get a multimeter like this, set it at DC voltage, and then put this red pin on the positive side, this one on the negative, and if it reads between about 3.5 to 3.7 on the meter here, then it goes in the good pile. If it reads below two volts, then it goes in the maybe pile because it might just be discharged. And if it reads anything below one volt, then it goes in the bad pile and these are all just garbage. So. Let me just show you one of the good ones here. So there you can see that it's hooked up. Now it's reading at 3.7, so this one's fine. And let me grab one of these bad ones. Here you can see this one is reading at 48 millivolts. There's the MV up there. So that means that's less than a volt. And uh, so this one is basically complete garbage because it should never be that low and then this one here is reading at about 2.5 so this one might still be good it might just be discharged so I'll see if any of the other ones that match this one have the same voltage and if they do they're most likely just discharged and need to be recharged. Right, so after testing the batteries and making sure they're charged you need these battery holders, these 1865 cell battery holders. And this is the way I configured mine. So I have it as four cells wired in series. So this way you get 3.7 volts from this, you get 3.7 from this, 3.7 and another 3.7, which ends up being about 14.8 volts and then you can step it down using an inverter or a controller and use a 12 volt inverter like this. So this is the way I have everything wired. So currently the way it works is I used some of this copper tape and I just cut some strips and laid the strips across right here and then I used resistor leads as fuses so that if, if it overdraws any of the cells here, then instead of blowing up the cell, it'll just get that fuse really hot and it'll melt and essentially that fuse will break. So the way I have it wired is these lines all connect the batteries in parallel so that when you connect batteries like this, essentially this is what it's doing. So if I had them all laid out like this, this would be in parallel. And the easiest way to tell if your batteries are laid out in parallel is there will be a rail here and a rail here. So like a train track, they're both parallel and they'll stay like that forever. This would be the positive track. This would be the negative track. So up here, using these holders, the way I have it laid out is this would be the negative track for this uh, line of batteries. And then on the other side is the positive track. 
So essentially they're laid out like this. So when you wire things in parallel, the voltage will remain the same, but the overall storage or the amps will um, go up. So voltage stays the same, but the overall storage gets combined. So it essentially becomes one huge battery. So every line here is one huge 3.7 volt battery. Then if you want to wire things to step up the voltage, which we need to here because we can't use 3.7 volts in order to power a 12 volt inverter. So we need to get up to 12 volts. So in order to do that, you have to wire things in series. And so what series is, is basically you put one here and then you connect the other one in series going across, so like this. And this will step up the voltage, so this would be 3.7, and then 7.4, I believe, and then another 3.7, and then another 3.7, which ends up being about 14.8. And so, the way I wired this was after making each line uh, cell in parallel, then I wired those in series. So the way this works is this side would be the positive. So this whole rail is the positive end of the battery. And here it hops over to the negative side, which then goes over to the other side. And then it connects on this side here to the next row. And then on the other side here, it connects back to this side. So the way this battery works is that one of these rails here, this is the positive rail and this is the negative rail. And the batteries are connected as if they were connected this way. So positive on one end, negative on the other end, connecting to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive. And that way, this gets stepped up to 14.8 volts, which then can be used over here. So the easiest way to tell would be to get a multimeter, set it as DC voltage, touch the negative side right there to the negative rail, and the positive side to the positive side. And there you can see it's at 14.99 volts. And this we can hook up to an inverter and convert it to 110 volt alternating current. So that's what we're going to do now, but before we do that, we need to get this wrapped up so that it doesn't get shorted out on anything else. So in order to do that, what I'm going to use is Kapton tape. Kapton tape is a special tape that reflects heat. So I will wrap this Kapton tape all around the batteries first and after that's done in order to make it a little bit more stable and easier to handle I'm gonna use Gorilla Tape and wrap the whole thing in Gorilla Tape before I wrap it up with these though I'm gonna use some of this electrical cable and just wire one into the positive side and one into the negative side so that way we can connect the battery to something like this, which is a solar charge controller, as you can see here. So this will regulate the voltage on the battery, and we'll, we can use a solar panel to charge the battery. This will regulate the voltage to the battery from the solar panel, and then it will also regulate the voltage that goes out of the battery to the load side. This also helps so that you don't undercharge the battery or overcharge the battery. If you get a battery too low, then it essentially becomes dead. So this will regulate it so we don't ever go below a specific threshold or above a specific threshold where we could potentially blow up some of these cells. So I'll be showing you guys how to do that in just a little bit. But first off, I'm gonna go ahead and get this 
wire soldered. So again, that's gonna be one side to the positive and one side to the negative. And then capped on tape to help with heat and then Gorilla tape to make it a little bit easier so to handle. You can see the wire is now soldered to that rail. And this one is wired to this rail up here. So now we can use it as a normal battery with a positive side and a negative side. Here you can see both sides are now covered with capped on tape just on the contacts to prevent a heat from either melting the solder here or if anything does short out here from the heat getting out and melting um, and melting the Gorilla tape or the plastic around here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more tape here to the rails and then basically just wrap it all up with Gorilla tape. So here is the solder points on the rail and then I bent the cable to go back and around. This way we can just have one clean point that, where it goes out and all of this can be wrapped up with Gorilla tape. And there we go, that's our finished product. Everything is wrapped with Gorilla Tape. And we have our cable going out with a positive and a negative end. For this, there's one side that has these little grooves. And I use that one as the positive, and the one that doesn't have anything on it, that doesn't have a texture, is the negative. Now we can go plug this into our charge controller and then hook it up to the solar panel. So here I've connected the battery up to the controller. As you can see, it's reading at 14.9 volts, just as the multimeter did before. And it's important that you hook up the battery first. That way the controller can calibrate it and figure out what type of battery this is. And then at this point we can go ahead and uh, Tap right here, and we can see uh, the type of battery there, the voltage, um, the load voltage, the top voltage, and the, or this is the load voltage. Um, the type of voltage. Uh, to send to the load, so either 24 hours or we can change it to 12 hours. And this is the charge voltage that comes from the solar panels. And that's the voltage that goes out to the load side right here. And this right here is the lowest acceptable voltage and I believe that's it. So up here we have one solar panel. The other panels are connected to their own grid that goes into the house. But just the one solar panel over there in the end is coming over here. And that panel goes over here and to the charge controller which has our battery connected to it and then on the load side over here it has our inverter and as you can see there there's a green light on it so there is power going to it and as you can see here the solar panel even though it's pretty cloudy out there is in fact charging the battery and the battery is outputting some of that power over to the inverter. So here you can see that with just one solar panel and one 12 volt battery we're getting quite a bit of draw now and that is because we're using this inverter here in order to power PlayStation 4 and a TV. As you can see here Everything is solar powered. You can see the cables there going over into the inverter and the inverter 
going into the controller here. Now, you need to be aware that some electronics may not function properly with this type of inverter. This here is a modified sine wave inverter and certain electronics, especially ones that have motors um, and some electronic devices like computers may not work properly. You might be able to hear a little buzzing sound back here. That's one of the issues that you'll notice when you use a modified sine wave inverter. If you want to get better performance, then I would suggest you use a pure sine wave inverter rather than a modified sine wave inverter. But these typically work when you're doing off-grid stuff. So if you are just in a building like this or in a garage and you just need some extra power, then this will work. If you're wanting to use like a fridge or something bigger, um, like a washing machine, then you would want to use a full sine wave inverter rather than something like this. But this, as you can tell, will work just fine to power your electronics. So that is basically how you set up your own little off-grid setup and how you can make your own batteries using 1865 lithium-ion cells.